Ah, uh, you know it's the day before Thanksgiving when we're already talking about joke sending someone in the chat to a labor camp. Ay, ay, ay. Only on a JRPG stream. Friends, thinkers, gamers, regulars, grail, and pottery, and newcomers and lurkers alike, welcome back to Tales of Praxis. I'm your host, Aaron Saduko, the founder of WithTheTerribleFate.com, your first and final source for all literary studies of video games, uh, our favorite literary uh, medium or audiovisual medium or whatever kind of medium you care to think of it as, uh, as we were <laughs> discussing in the pre-stream conversation. Uh, it's hump day. It's also the day before Thanksgiving uh, for those of you in the States who observe, which I think is a nice vibe to have for a game like this, of course, on Thanksgiving. And I imagine I'll probably tweet about this or something tomorrow, but I'm always in a constant state of such gratitude, not only for the thoughtful stories and lessons that are created and expressed through this medium by the many thoughtful uh, creators and game designers in it, but also for a community of thoughtful gamers who bring so many different perspectives and interests to this wonderful, multidimensional, interactive landscape that is gaming, uh, and who, at least to my eye, seem year by year, sometimes even month by month or day by day, increasingly attuned to and excited about the literary content of these games, uh, how to read them, and how that can inform who they want to be and what they want to do in the world, which is so much of what we're concerned with at With a Terrible Fate, and specifically, as you might or might not know, on Tales of Praxis. And there you go. It's nice for days off as well. Nice for days off to take a minute to breathe and rest and recuperate and get ready for the holidays. And also, if you can find a moment to sit in gratitude, I think it's good for that too. Oh no, you have to work on Black Friday, Grail. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. I hope you make it through in one piece, but I'm sure you'll tell us about it afterwards. Uh, it's a nice um, tone to be setting for this particular game we're exploring right now, I thought, as well, because as we've been talking about, while Tales of Graces F is about so many things, certainly one of its central considerations is friendship, especially over the last couple of streams we've been thinking about both the positive and negative aspects of friendship, as Sophie has found herself struggling with the idea of um, how something like a pact of friendship um, confines and constrains her in certain ways and structures what she can and cannot do relative to other people. And I think seeing that idea of friendship and those relationships with others through the stance and perspective of gratitude um, is something that we have not thought about explicitly and we may not even need to discuss explicitly, but I think having that as part of the disposition with which we work into this stream uh, not only on the eve of Thanksgiving, but also when we are in um, perhaps the bleakest area of the world to date. I think it's safe to say the bleakest area of the world to date. Uh, one that I, I have to imagine intentionally was based pretty firmly on the USSR, based on a lot of the tropes and elements of it that we were discussing last time, and I'm sure we'll continue to discuss. Nice to think about what the game might be saying about gratitude in one way or another. Oh, well, there you go, Padre. Yeah, not alone. And as, as you both know, I'm somewhat in between the day jobs myself, so we're all in a bit of a, a wonky space on this Thanksgiving. But all the better to appreciate the diversities and particularities of our situation, something else that JRPGs are great for, right? Uh, for those who are not as familiar with Tales of Praxis, it's a project that I undertook for With a Terrible Fate uh, the better part of a year ago at this point, basically simply asking the question, what has Bandai Namco's Tales series meant to me over the years? Uh, what has it meant to other gamers? And what are the lessons it's trying to impart through the language of its storytelling across all of these incredibly rich and thoughtful and distinct yet interrelated games uh, that make up the Tales series? So we've done that through these wonderful live book clubs, sitting down and playing through these games together and thinking um, very deeply about each one in a close reading kind of context, but also putting them in conversation with one another. Uh, and then I've also been publishing my own longer analytical studies on them, trying to get to what I think um, some of the core lessons 
and themes of the games are, uh, which are all available on withaterriblefate.com, everything from character studies to small confined looks at particular moments to uh, extensive, let's say, uh, intertextual readings between different games. So I encourage you to check those out. Oh, I also said uh, on Monday that I would plug the new podcast episode, which is in fact out. So if you're a fan of podcasts, if you want something gaming themed to put on in the background of whatever you might be doing over this Thanksgiving interval, uh, Dan and I have something new for you. I'll drop the link in the chat. It was a really fun one. I think I talked a little bit about it on Monday, if I remember correctly. But the idea was basically, um, I'm someone especially who, as I was growing up, and even after I was grown up for a long time, I really, um, I made it a point, and I think I almost took it as a point of pride, only to really sit down and play one game at a time so that I could really focus on it and be fully present and engaged with it. And as I've gotten older, for a variety of reasons, that's just no longer the case. And I think for many of the gamers whom I ask, it's, it's not the case, including Dan. Uh, perhaps because there are so many games, perhaps because as we get older, we kind of want to reach back into our past gaming history while also keeping up with the current times. Perhaps also because we want to dip into different um, playthroughs of games in different contexts. Maybe we want to keep one in our pocket for when we want to grind and just tune out and meditate. Maybe we want to be actively reading one. Maybe we want to even use one as a bedtime story. Um, so we, we had a freewheeling conversation basically about the different ways in which we have a variety of diverse overlapping gameplay experiences simultaneously these days and what that does to color our experiences, uh, as well as how we experience those sorts of serialized approaches to wading through multiple games, sometimes in quick succession, sometimes over longer sequences that in a similar kind of hodgepodge or overlapping of content return to similar characters or indeed even the same characters in different contexts. Uh, as, for instance, was the case with Beyond the Dawn, which many of us just played together, uh, and as is similarly the case for the Persona 5 oeuvre, uh, as Dan is working his way through Tactica right now, and so that was on his mind. So, if you're interested, give it a listen. Love to hear what you think. Love to hear your own thoughts on your own experiences while in gaming, broadly speaking, but also especially in terms of if you play a lot of stuff at once, how that colors your experience of it. Yeah, there you go, Padre. And I, I feel like I feel like that's similar to a lot of people like Dan. And I'm probably intuitively going into this camp without realizing it, where you just kind of have basic rule sets or play styles almost in terms of saying, okay, it's not going to be a free for all. There's going to be some method to the madness. So I'm I'm only going to play like X number of games at once, and they're going to fall into Y number of categories and have this kind of duration or sequencing across my week or month or what have you. That can be a nice way to avoid the chaos. Ping ponging from game to game too, definitely Grail. I feel like that's a that's a mood. <laughs> yeah, almost like the the ADD popcorning of gaming. One thing that continues to be on my mind, and this comes up in the podcast as well, is just um, we were thinking back about some of the game experiences we had this year. And I don't think on that this has to be a bad thing, but one thing that does kind of get my dander up in a way that um, maybe shouldn't be the case is we both experienced, and I imagine that you all might have experienced this with one game or another as well, games where we're going through our flow, we have the games that we're working through because we elected to and we're doing them according to our own play styles at our own pace. And then suddenly something will come up that's brand new and sparkly and we feel compelled to play through it right away in an insane amount of time because we know that otherwise we'll discover spoilers for it on the internet, which would radically change uh, our experience with the game, perhaps, arguably, and I would argue, and I have argued, for the worse uh, in many cases, like uh, what some of us did with Beyond the Dawn, or again, what Dan is doing with Tactica, or what we both did with Final Fantasy 16 earlier this year. So especially when there are so many reasons according to which you can elect to sit down and play a game from your past or present 
uh, reasons which are within your control, uh, and especially when games are so agency forward with their interactivity, I think it uh, it grinds my gears a little bit when I feel that agency taken away from me by this uh, this felt obligation to play something in order to avoid spoilers. But again, more power to Bandai Namco for trying at least to make a best effort to encourage the people who are playing and streaming and engaging with Beyond the Dawn to avoid spoilers. But it's just a little bit of what the culture is at this point, I guess. Oh yeah, and see pottery. Like I, uh, I mean, I watch shows and you know we'll, we'll sometimes read books as well. But I feel like one of the ways in which I keep myself sane, especially when I'm doing a lot of like work on the study of games, is to just narrow myself to the one medium, which can be another way to do it. Yeah, if I had to hold like uh, a book, like a novel, or um, you know, a, a long running, like very thoughtful TV series or something in my head, that would only overwhelm me all the more. Although I have been working through the practice, which is one of the first great um, like TV procedural legal shows, uh, which is great and really fun. But even as I've been sitting down to work through that more, uh, highly recommend it. But I've, I've already felt like, man, with all the JRPGs in my head, it's hard to remember the names of all of these lawyers. So it's, it, uh, you know, it's, it's a balancing act at the end of the day. Uh, no, I don't think Malik does pottery. We looked at that at the end of the stream last time. So we're, uh, we're keeping an eye out for it, but I'm sure I'm sure that thing that you're waiting for will come up sooner or later. No doubt about that. <laughs> well, and yeah, Grail, I would say for what it's worth, I really do believe that, especially in our age of so many different media, people read in different ways according to different media. So I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, if, if you really want to take it upon yourself to sit down and read something longer, uh, like a novel, and you find that you can't, that's one thing. But if you just really enjoy in the abstract the value of reading, I mean, as you said, that's what you do with manga. That's evidently what you do with games. So it's not as if you aren't getting your reading in uh, for what it's worth, if you want my opinion. Um, I am continuing to work through the uh, more academic philosophy article that I've been alluding to on the last few streams, uh, which is edifying but intensive in its own way. But I only say that by way of saying, once that's concluded, you can count on more written content for the Tales of Praxis series too. I, I am overwhelmed and excited about the many thoughts I have on ways in which to tie these games together, many of which have come out on the stream already, but stay tuned for that. I'm sure we'll get some more, uh, some more out by the end of the year at least. Oh yeah, he's been keeping me honest. You don't have to worry about that, Pottery. <laughs> you know Grail's great for that. Uh, I titled this stream, one Day in the Life of Captain Malik, which is a maybe somewhat obscure reference at this point to this uh, this classic novella called One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, which I think was the very first book that I read in a freshman English course um, in my high school days. And it's a novel where the entire plot centers on, as the name suggests, a single day in the life of this guy uh, in a, a, a um, Soviet labor camp in a gulag. Um, and so it, uh, it's something that I haven't read since then, but even with my memory of it and just the banality yet severity of it, uh, and looking at some of the quiet reflections we've gotten from Malik, um, implying that he used to live here in Fendel in this similarly harsh and banal landscape, uh, it was on my mind. And I think it's it's nice to sit in this uh, somewhat more downbeat and perhaps mournful or at least trepidatious music and think about what the truly day-to-day -day lived experience would be like for these people who have to hopelessly scrounge for um, little Creus shards just in hopes of being able to heat their homes, uh, let alone figure out how to eat or make a living or avoid labor camps. So I, uh, I'm hoping we'll find some, some shards of hope, speaking of looking for shards in this stream, but it's definitely a tonal shift. And as we talked about, uh, Tales of Graces F seems to be rife with those. So looking forward to what it throws us next. Oh, Grail, no, I haven't, but I will, I will take the hint, my friend. I will check those um, right after the stream. Yeah, I, I didn't see any notifications, but I've also been running around getting for, getting to the get, well, excuse me, getting ready for the stream and such. So I will uh, I will do that after the stream, my friend. Yeah, I noticed that there are actually some uh, 
like some pretty interesting similarities uh, and distinctions between these portraits. Also like um, Sophie's and Sheria's, like similar energy, I would say, uh, but facing in the opposite direction. And you get sort of a, uh, a brotherly similarity in energy and uh, expression, I would say, between Hubert and Asbel. So you could tell, unsurprisingly, for the Tales series, I know they put some thought into it, I would say. Speaking of thought, let's get playing, let's get thinking. I, uh, I know, Grail, at the very end of last stream, you said we had a missable side quest here at the end, so I figure I'll start there and we will work outward from there. Welcome back, my friends, to a thankful middle of the week Tales of Praxis. First, we might as well do the hygienics of also looking at the requests, if there's anything. A spoon! My brother hurt his hand, digging for Creus. If only we had a spoon, it would make his life a lot easier. Oh, a request by a child for a spoon. <laughs> well... If we're looking for shards of hope, we're, uh, we're going to continue looking. At least we have some of the smaller ones to fulfill. That's nice. Your reminders are never worthless, Grail. If anything, it's the frequency of your reminders that helps me to internalize some of them. Uh, and hopefully make your life a little easier by having to remind me a little less. So it's a virtuous cycle, my friend. These days, my life is all about running. People even call me the marathoner now. Pretty cool, huh? See that giant hole in the road? It's a crater from an explosion. Some new winder weapon, I bet. Was the sleeping at the end the thing that was supposed to trigger the side quest, Grail? Because it, it doesn't look like anything was procced. You know that crater south of town? Most people think it was an attack from an enemy nation. But I know that's hogwash. It was caused by a new lf powered weapon. A lot of mystery behind the origin of this crater. Yeah, you can go ahead and tell me, Pottery. I, uh, that's that's not a spoiler. That would be helpful. Ooh, a little backstage area. More seeds. And Kygar's script. A script written long ago. It's kind of interesting, but kind of not. Boy, that bug that's crawling around is so unnerving. I thought it was a bug on my monitor, actually, but no, it's, uh, it's just supposed to be a not especially well-kept place, I guess. Oh, so what is the what is the something else we have to do? Do you know? Uh, Magna Resolver. Let me let me check for that as well, Potter. Is that an art of Alex or a title? Yeah, we have Magna Resolver. That we do have. Use that a bunch. All right. Well, here. I said I usually don't do this, and I don't for all the reasons that you two know, but <laughs> to uh, to satisfy the desire for a special something from Malik, which I'm sure we'll be happy to have, I'll go ahead and do that. How about that? Oh, got it. So we just had to do this first. Well, there you go. We would have arrived at it anyways. Ugh, reading this script is exhausting. I'm really hungry, Sharia. Oh, what a difficult life Her Majesty leads. What can I get Her Highness? <laughs> bananas? Just bananas? <laughs> well, if you also find banana pie for dessert, that'd be swell. You like bananas that much? I love bananas and banana pie. It's because bananas look like balconists and stuff. I see. I guess I can see that now that you say it. This is another, um, we, 
we've had a few things like this to my memory that have uh, come out in the game play so far where there are little things that could easily be allusions to other games, but they don't have to be. And if you miss it, you don't really miss much, but the idea of a, uh, a script hanging out back here, the back of a theater to me, having really recently played Tales of Eternia evokes um, this whole play that you can see in the capital of one of the worlds and if you invest the time and effort to watch the whole thing which consists of eight acts uh, you can actually discover the play for it lying around on stage afterwards the play for it excuse me the script for it best princess stories all right finding that everywhere Now there's a skit at the save point, I think is what it said. All right, well, there's no skit at the save point yet. I'll try resting again. Maybe that'll proc it. Now that we saw the skit about the script, well, about bananas, but <laughs> the one that was triggered by the script. Anything? No. Very weird. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we can always check back later before we go off in another direction out of Fendel, but yeah, we also haven't very thoroughly explored the town yet, so we can always just check back at the end before we move on. Might need to be something else that happens in town first. Uh, okay. Onward. Oh, we can't go up that ladder, right? I think I yeah, no, that's not a real ladder. All right, onward. I don't think we went in here yet. Hey, my mom's sleeping. Don't wake her up, okay? Oh, God. Just the overwhelming poverty in this place. Especially starting out in a place like Lot. How far we've come. Bush baby plushie! All right, that's what I'm all about. A stuffed toy of a bush baby. It's nice to have around when you're feeling lonely. If you have three different kinds of fish, I can make you a seafood set. Please. Uh, okay. That'll do it. Hope you don't mind, but I kept the leftover bits for my mom. Oh my god. Can they make Fendel any sadder? I think they can. Careful what you wish for. A secret seafood combination known only to chefs. Your choice of any three fish or shellfish. I don't think it gave us the option to turn off a arts unless it was hiding it from us. Oh, I guess we can turn off these. Yes. Okay, but you're saying we shouldn't turn off the burst arts? That's fine. I have no problem with that. So I like that then. All right. <laughs> yeah it is a very nice aesthetic isn't it oh the sad looking cat seems to want fish even the poor cat is starved well we gave it a crab at least I like those little interactions with the cats because I have no idea, and I feel like it could go either way in a Tales game, whether it ultimately rewards you if you feed every cat in the world or something like that, but I would be perfectly happy and feel like it was worthwhile to feed the cats in the world they've constructed, especially in a, in a situation like here in Fendel, uh, purely for the sake of it, which is nice that they've created a fiction that supports that. 
The name of the monster that lives on Creus fragments. Is this a password hint? Yeah, it is. Um, but can I remember the name of that monster that was right at the end of the last stream? That's another question. <laughs> That's it. It's Rockagong. Ah, I got it in one. I can cheat because, uh, well, I don't really consider this cheating. This is just using the resources we have. Stratium. There it is. Because I remembered that it was a horn. Mostly thanks to Tales of Vesperia rather than uh, Tales of Graces, but it worked out. See, this is something that they've done in the earlier games too, but in a town like this, I don't even really mind because this poor kid. Oh, and we got the spoon. There you go. So we got to make life better for the poor kid who's extorting us and also the poor kid whose family is um, starving or losing heat, whatever the case may be. Oh, okay. I can do that. So then it would be like this. Burst starts are off. He has the lower CC assault arts, but um, but corruption claw, which is also three CC, is off. There we go. Oh, did I put the burst arts back on? All right. Oh my goodness, the things I do for you guys. <laughs> Kidding. There. All right. Hopefully we're all happy now. <laughs> well, again... It, I, I cannot emphasize how much it is something I never do in these games, so. <laughs> it's a team sport. Now we can deliver the spoon. Wow, the spoon looks really sturdy. My brother's going to be so happy. It still hasn't triggered anything at the inn. This looks to be the way out of town, I think. I participated in the invasion of Lont. Their lord was no ordinary man. I've not seen a stronger fighter in all my days. And not just physical strength. His strength of will was, well, it was a sight to see. If you go through the mountain pass up here, you'll find a world entombed in snow. I want to turn a phrase. The road to Zavrid is long and hard. Make sure you're ready. All right, let's do that. Got a title for Sharia. Of course he's not in the same place. Where are you hiding? You sneaky extortionist. It's not you. I 
saw her, the little miscreant who made the crater outside of town. It was a woman, maybe 20 or so, and her clothes were like... Well, like this girl here. Actually, she looked just like this girl. Ah, Pascal. I had a feeling you had more to do with that crater than you were letting on. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem very comprehensive in its guidance. It's kind of fun, though. You have to work a little bit to figure things out on your own. My wife claims to have seen the criminal who made the big pit south of town. All right, nothing there. Is this the kid? Mom left to go work the other night, no. That kid was there before. That's the exit. Can we get in there? I don't think we can get in there. Hmm. I don't think we've been back into the inn since he relieved us of our cash. I think that's the last place. And otherwise we can just come back later, I suppose. There he doesn't seem to be anywhere. Oh, maybe backstage? I didn't check backstage. No. Oh, but we um, we got the name of the monster, um, Stratin, if I can remember how to spell it. Stratin. Did I really? No, I thought that's what I put in. I evidently did not. There we go. Book of Deduction. A spell book that automatically deducts gall to refill your Elif whenever you enter a town. That's somewhat convenient. No, he's definitely not. Those are two different characters. Well, especially since there's some... Uh, is this a stove? Since there's some mystery event that happens at the end that we haven't been able to get yet, I figure maybe if we rest at the end, it might reset things. It's really the only other idea I have. <laughs> well, at least one of us has Hawkeyes. My, uh, my typing has definitely gotten worse with accuracy for fidelity to the way in which I want to spell things in my head over the last few years. <laughs> so that doesn't surprise me all that much. Two things can be true, Grail. Don't forget. There can be two bullies in the room. Uh, yeah, speaking of bullies, I, I don't have hope for finding this kid right now. Unless he is behind that barrier, that seems like a plausible place for him to be. No, all right, that was my last guess. Talk? Ah, oh, talk! Ah, oh, there. I had a feeling he'd be hiding somewhere on this screen. Ah, oh, crap. It's always as soon as you're ready to give up. Okay, okay, fine, I'll give it back. kind of wanted him to have it. I feel so bad for the people in this area. Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry about stealing from you earlier. My mom's real sick, you see, so I just... Is that your mother sleeping over there? Yeah, I want to get her a doctor from Zavhurt, but it costs way more money than we have. Oh, 
How much do you need? Well... How about 200 gold so I can get my mom a doctor? Absolutely. Hee <laughs> hee, thanks. How about 400? Yes, thank you. How about 800? Okay. We're gonna run out of money at some point here. I think this might be it. Yeah. Well, we tried. Twelve thousand eight hundred. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a lot of gold at this point in the game, which is, I suppose, the point. But still. Extortion. <laughs> He's trying to help his sick mom. <laughs> Maybe his game plan for getting it wasn't the best, but oh my god, in this brutal corner of the world, can you really blame him? I just don't know why he wouldn't tell us the amount it costs in full. That part is hard to square with the rest of it for me. Well, let's see real quick. Is there anything that we can dualize and then sell? in order to make some scratch. <laughs> uh, you forget, we don't have a unicorn horn, otherwise it would be bing, bang, boom, done. This is 100, yeah, the exact same amount. Fun dualizing. Let's see, how much gold does that get us? Well, it gets us enough to give him more gold, I think, but it sounds like, from what you said, Grail, that's not going to be enough. We might as well go the same rung. I have to imagine he will stay there. Usually those sorts of gold quests are not time-boxed. I've heard great things about it, Pottery, but no, I have not played it. Have you? Yeah, no, I'm telling you, that's, uh, that's, that's part of why I made that allusion to a day in the life of Ivan Denisovich, because I think there are certain aspects of places such as this that you can really only understand once you have them like sink into you over a certain duration just blowing through you don't you don't really see the ways in which this kind of world can get under your skin and change your whole state of being in awful awful ways the only thing i heard about the remaster because i'm so outside that community was i guess there was some controversy right because it didn't um like include the English dub that the original had or something like that. Yeah, as, as I said, and I'm unsurprised to hear that you loved it, Padre, based on what I've heard elsewhere, but uh, it, is, it is such a beloved game for reasons that, as I understand it, are right up my alley, so it's definitely on my list. Now we don't have any gold. Well, it was worth it to try to help that kid's mother. I wouldn't mind coming back here at some point once we have more gold, but for the time being, we can be off. <laughs> oh, 
Well, there you have it, Potter. He asked and answered. We will They're a classic, there's no doubt about that. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. I'm gonna get back in the zone here. Oh my goodness, stop doing that, Ropers! What the hell? Yeah, it's people can people have a bad time living here, you're gonna have a bad time fighting through the enemies here. It's just, it's just bad all the way down. Nothing that looks as silly as they do has any business casting spells as powerful as those. It's okay. Probably should have dealt with them first. No, we know. Pulled it off somehow. Barely. And poor Hubert is still dead. So, which title are we looking for for Malik to unlock? Just so I can keep an eye out for that. Magnar is over at that. Got it. I'll keep an eye out. I'm missing Pascal. I'm going to put her back in the party somewhere. Um, we just got Hubert, but I'm missing Pascal. I'm going to rotate her back in. There we go. They must have explained to us at some point that the enemies in Graces have group resonance, but I had totally forgotten that was a mechanic in this game. That will change how I play some of these fights. Yeah, that's what I figured for that one. 
Hey, Doug. Welcome back, my friend. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good hump day. Oh, my God. Speaking of that spell, that's enough of that, Rover. What's our motto? Never give up! Yeah, we missed you. Yeah, stream's up on YouTube if you feel the occasion to catch up asynchronously at some point. Platinum Tunic, alright. And a hard scale. This I gotta see. Is there a riff we can do on back in the USSR? I'm back in Fandola and it's sad. Oh, it's not very good. I want it to be better than it is. The cold hard truth. Oh. It sure gets cold inside these caves. This isn't a cave. It's a tunnel through the mountains built by the Fandolian government. Humans built this? That's incredible. Yes, and ever since its completion, Fendel has pestered Windor with incessant incursions. If it wasn't for this, Dad might still be alive. Hmm. With Fendel free to torment Windor as it pleases, there can be no peace or joy for Lant. Peace or joy. Those words sound odd after seeing the people of Velenik. Are we the victims here? Or are they? And if Fendel is the greater victim, what do you plan to do about it? I don't know, but someday we may have to come up with an answer. Yeah, it's still quite vague what's going on with Richard at this point, Doug. I would say for my part, the long and the short of it is he showed up inexplicably to the Valcanus Creus in Strata and absorbed all of its Elif and he sent his like dragon-like um, peons after the party, and then we saw a scene of him breaking down, basically as if there was another presence inside him, and trying to reason with it and saying that he didn't want to hurt his friends, uh, and he was in a lot of internal discord and agony over that. And the understanding is that he also absorbed all of the Elith from the Valcanus Creus in Windor, and he was presumably headed to the last one here in Fendel next, which is why we ended up going here in hopes of trying to figure out what he's up to and stuff him. What a feeble little brat, complaining that it's cold. This ain't nothing. We were born in Zavert. When has anyone from Zavert seen a day without snow? Uh, I love that you're keeping track of all your different hypotheses as we work through this, Doug. That must be fun. It's a good way to do it. This pass cuts straight through the heart of the mountain range. Suspicious powder. It looks suspicious, but truly is used in legit medicine. <laughs> the description said very believably. You can sell it for 1,647 gold. Oh, it's valuable suspicious powder. I'm in. Items are strange things, aren't they? They come in many different forms and have many different uses. People call me the spry scavenger. Ha <laughs> ha, it feels good to have a title. Okay, weirdo. Yeah, you know, they just uh, flail around and throw magic and arms and sometimes magic arms at you. Very regular. Lots of fun. If you head left and exit the tunnel, you'll emerge in the Fendel Highlands. If you're trying to get to the capital city of Zavert, the Highlands are the way to go. Oh, we can't go any further. You monsters. Trash! <laughs> Fantastic. Mission accomplished. Sir Bottle. Leafy Balm. 
right, for Malik, right? Yeah, quite a different soundtrack for quite a different country. Focus, I really like it. May we never have a Tales of Graces stream go by without mentioning the soundtrack. Yeah, I imagine even just his moveset of casting into rapier would fit pretty nicely with uh, the way Smash Bros. goes. Oh my god, leave us alone! God damn it. If the party could be a little more competent and interrupt their casting. How they cast so quickly too, that's part of the problem. I feel like a fist fighter would be nice for Smash 2, like Law or Sentinel or someone. You could probably make a case for most of them to be honest, Sophie. It's an inconclusive sign though, Grail. I'm not, not willing to decrease it or grind yet, but I will, uh, I'm keeping an eye out. Sometimes just a certain enemy type will do it, and it may indeed end up being the robbers. <laughs> yeah, I could see the division of arts between Assault and Burst really fitting nicely with the way Smash Bros. does things. It's a great point. these herbs while we're here. That won't hurt. Tree. That's gotta be it. The research. And what are we muttering about? Something to do with this frozen tree, perhaps? <sighs> that is no answer. Now speak. What are you trying to hide from me? Huh? Oh, nothing at all. I'm just wondering what's up with the Valcanus. What's up? The Valcanus is near Zavhurt, yeah? So I'm just worried about what kind of research they're conducting. You think that it's possible that the military might be using the Elith from the Falconess? If Fendel is thinking along those lines, it falls to us to stop them. And then we can dispense with that other menace to the Falconess as well. I wonder if Richard will be there. Only one way to find out. 
Focus, this will be tough. And they're not casting, they still suck, but they're at least manageable. such a fun and natural way to think about your favorite game series in this day and age, right? Which characters would be a good fit for Smash and why? Especially for something like a, a Tales-style JRPG series in the wake of Cloud and Sephiroth and Pyra and Mithra and similar characters being added, which is fantastic. Oh, I can't believe I almost missed Igtenos hanging out here. Glory to Fandaria. My man, one of my very favorite Swordians. <laughs> I say my man, I should say my sword. Ah, oh, it's a one-way path, I see. They got me. No, that's all right, it wasn't a very long path. Jesus Christ! Stop it! Too many things! I don't know if this is a great time to be focused on doing fun title building things with Malik because I have to imagine his lack of access to arts is part of why he keeps dying. Oh my god! Sheltia is so sad though. <laughs> I get, you know, of all the Sordians having Sheltia be your least favorite, but I just can't help but pity Sheltia for very similar reasons to my pity for Leon, you know? I think it might arguably be the worst time for that, especially since we're now out of life bottles. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a call here, actually. Not a time for us to have half a character with us in battle. Even 
in battle, it's important to pay right. respects. Okay. <laughs> Not like that. This? No, I... Never mind. Uh, excuse me, sir. I take exception to the claim that it was Aaron who decided to turn off the other arts. I I had to go through it more than once because it was Grail who was suggesting I turn off certain other arts. <laughs> I might have considered it as a possibility because you all mentioned it several streams ago, but <laughs> Grail was the one who took me through multiple iterations of that. No, Grail is telling me to turn off all the burst arts. <laughs> Safford is a huge city built to act as a defensive bulwark for the entire region. The buildings are a world apart from the sort you see in Windor. Nothing but clanking metal everywhere. <laughs> it's a conversation starter, Doug. It's, it's a great one. Actually, Grail, that's exactly what it means. <laughs> oh my god, you all. I say so many times that that's something I never do, and yet somehow, in this stream where I mysteriously ended up doing it for reasons other than myself, I get all the fucking blame and none of the gratitude. Oh. None of the gratitude on a stream that I spent like five to ten minutes at the beginning of saying ought to be specifically about gratitude because it's the day before Thanksgiving. Oh, can't win for losing. Sweet snowflakes, is that the Rockagong flute? This? Yeah, I guess. We found it in the Rockagong's stomach. G -g Goy? P pow Hot farg! Okay, that was weird. You can go back and argue it was my idea. I will fight you tooth and nail on that pottery. <laughs> but I invite you to try. Thank you, Grail. I appreciate the appreciation. Hey, don't call me weird or I'll give you a big, fat, sweaty hug. Brr. No, thank you. What the hell is wrong with you? I was ready for the worst when I came here, but now i found an even worser worst. Well, that's that. Might as well head back to Zafford. You really will go to the mat for the funny. <laughs> Bring it on, Pottery. Bring it on. Anybody know what he was talking about? Let's just pretend we never saw him. I think that's a fantastic idea. Hey, what are you idiots standing around for? Move it already. If you have something to tell us, then out with it. We're not so idiotic as to follow you around in a snowstorm. And who's the idiot here? Are you saying it's me? This guy's a real freak show. Hey, Missy, you were just thinking I'm a freak show, weren't you? What? No, I just... Enough. Just tell us what you want and be done with it. Fine, fine. Well, you know that Rockagong flute you're carrying around? It's actually mine. Wait, are you the guy from that house in the Rockagong stomach? What kind of weirdo chooses to live in a stomach? I'm not a weirdo! <laughs> Didn't you read my letter? I vaguely recall a letter. Something about saving the Rockagong because you could not, yes? I have to admit, I thought you'd look different. Hey, I was just trying to put some drama into it, you know? This guy's a serious pain in the... Anyway! Don't worry about saving the rocker gong anymore. I just want you to save me. Will you please, for the love of all that is good and holy, get to the point? Okay, okay, she's So it's like this. I want to present my rocker gong findings at the upcoming Academia conference, but no one believes they're true. Academia conference? Judging by this man, I have my doubts as to the conference's veracity. I want to go to a macadamia conference. Mm. I said academia. And I may not look it to you, but I'm actually a phenomenally skilled researcher. I don't trust this guy one bit. I think he's trying to trick us. No tricks, I swear. See? I just read your mind. You have to believe me now. But anyway, here's the deal. 
I need some rakugong fur. I posted a request in Zavert, but no one's taken me up on it. Perhaps they're smart enough not to get involved. You wound me, sir. So, you want us to find you some rakugong fur, is that it? Yes, exacto mundo. Anyway, I'm heading back to the city. Let me know when you get it. Wait, I don't suppose you know how to get such a thing. That's why I'm hiring you. Sheesh. You're not coming with us? I thought you wanted to get back to the Rockagong. No, nah, I got a pass. I'm going to go home and warm my feet by the fire. But good luck. Yeah, another reason to face the Rockagong. I smell. Well, I'm fresh out of ideas. I doubt the beast has fur on the inside, which means we'll need to procure some from its outer layer. Wonderful. I think that takes the cake for the most outlandish side quest interaction we've had so far. In, at least in this game. Maybe in many of the games I've replayed for Tales of Praxis so far. Fur of the Gong. Oh my god, all this trash. Just adds to the general despair of the region. Garbage for the world. Oh my god, I was about to say it felt like we were handling these enemies way better than the ones in the cave, and then I turned around and Malik is dead already. Is everyone okay? Dude. Thank goodness. National celebrity. Oh, there's a sad transitive argument there that like despairing Soviet era society is the average inner city these days. Uh, sure, it doesn't have revival arts, does she? No. That'd be too easy. <laughs> Everything in Fendel is a harsh breeze. Sheltier, ah, huh? speak of the devil. Will appear. Will always be my young master. Oh my god. Rend me in two. These cards are descriptions. A scabbard made of solid gold. When you bite it, it leaves a mark. I don't know about biting it, but I will equip it to Asbel. Oh, does Sophie have a revival art? I don't think so. Not yet. No. Honestly, maybe we should just hurry to the capital and cut our losses. Recuperate once we have items. I think that's going to be the play. <laughs> Not before I see what's over here. If you're looking for the capital city, cross the highlands and look for a port. My cabbages! A highlands cabbage! That looks tasty! Hmm, interesting. I never thought the day would come... Yeah, destitute eight ways to Sunday, right? ...the Fendel Highlands. What do you mean? Haven't we been seeing them all along? Until now. You got it, Graham. No man of Strata has ever See, I'm cultured. <laughs> I know things. So now you can brag about it when you get back. I suppose so. It is quite a point of pride. After all, no one we sent through Fendel Mountain Pass has ever returned. Wait, what do you mean? We sent countless spies to infiltrate Fendel. 
but none made it to the Imperial capital of Zavhurt and returned. Incidentally, the capital is said to be right past the Highlands. But we'll be able to make it back, right? I'm sure our men said the same thing. Oy, oy, oy. The despair is seeping into Hubert's bones. At least we can outrun the enemies on the map. That's a saving grace. No, thank you. Can it keep snowing like this? I'm freezing here. Hey, uh, Sophie, how about you and me cuddle up? You seem in high spirits. Meh, I don't mind the cold so much. But you've been making a big deal about how cold you are ever since we got to Fendel. <laughs> what a message. <laughs> okay, I get it. You just wanted to touch her. Go ahead, Sophie. You can tell Pascal to shove off. <clears throat> Sophie? Oh, yes. Shove off, Pascal. You okay? You've been acting strange ever since we saw Richard again. That's not true. I'm okay. Just trying to remember who I am. No big thing. Probably won't come up again. I suppose in the broader arc of things, that was the other aspect you missed, Doug. Um, along with Richard continuing to sort of degrade, um, Sophie is increasingly wrestling with the sense that she has some idea that she is meant to do something um, that's connected with her past or her memories, but she has no idea what that is and is kind of afraid to discover it. Rumor has it the government's hatching some kind of enormous operation right now. Some of the stories even claim the Martians are involved. Oh, I'm interested. It's easy to get lost around here. The sky is so overcast, I can't even see his fossilos. Uh, by the way, just what is fossilos anyways? Give me all your wares, please. Minimum that, that will help. <laughs> yeah, I don't, we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of thinking about turning it back down to moderate because I remember saying that I was quite enjoying the level of challenge and reward on uh, on that balance and see this is my problem though because hard obviously is harder uh, but then once I've cranked it up and it is in the strictest terms survivable it feels like such a cop out to me to, uh, <laughs> to turn it back down unless I really have to but we'll see how it goes Well, but see, this is my problem, Pottery, because there are so many different kinds of fun, and even when it seems like I'm suffering, it's also tapping into the particular breed of fun that I have, say, when I sit down and play one of Miyazaki's games. <laughs> so it, it taps into a dark, masochistic satisfaction deep inside of me, and it's hard to turn that off. <laughs> but you know I've done so for things like uh, like Berseria's Endgame, and, or not Endgame, but Postgame and stuff like that, so... It's certainly not beyond the pale of reason. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, that's right. We need to sell the things that we just lost. Mm. 
Okay, we have some finances. How about that? Yeah, for sure. Well, it, it feels so far, at least, <laughs> Roper's notwithstanding, to be the sort of thing that is learnable um, and, and rewards you know, understanding and struggling through the battles. So as long as I'm feeling that way about it, I don't have so much of an issue with continuing on the path. But we'll see. His efforts progressed a lot over the last few years, but life hasn't gotten any easier. How can it, after all, when we still lack a consistent source of Aleph? Issues with their Valkanus Creus too, perhaps? Making a girl cart this luggage in the cold. This is one job I sure wouldn't mind them limiting to men. I've pulled freight here for decades. It's nice to see the country grow, but the military's grip on power scares me. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't it anyone? Don't forget to mind your manners around Grandpa and Grandma now. I hope Grandma and Grandpa are okay. Oh, buddy, no one seems especially okay in this country. Fire Creus is pretty much the only thing that ever gets shipped to this port. Over in Zavrit, they burn all sorts of stuff to make machines. You can catch a ferry to Zavrit from the port. That's probably the easiest way to get there. Yeah, the, uh, the ecosystem definitely gives it a different sort of utility than what you get in the other parts of the world. Although, I, I mean, the desert world of Strata was also pretty oppressively hot, so I feel like if you think about those as the two extremes of the climate livability spectrum, I could, I could kind of see that argument applying to both of them. Don't bother running from those effort soldiers. You wouldn't stand a chance. This ship will take us to Zephyrt. You seem to know a lot about this country. Is that a problem? No, not a problem. It's just... interesting. The captain's crazy old. He probably knows about everything by now. Tactful as always, Pascal. <laughs> if I had to pick one word to describe Pascal, it would be tactful. I'm not! I'm only like 22, and so I thought that Gramps here might be all kapow, and then... I love that she says she's only like 22 as if she's so delighted and distracted by the things that grab her attention she can't even be bothered to remember her exact age. I didn't mean the subject of your age. Don't fight. Sorry about that, Pascal. Oh, no worries. Doesn't bother me. Fendel's famous for its cabbage. They grow it in the snowfield, so it tastes delicious. <laughs> More crablet stuff. I like crablets a lot. You mean crab omelets? Yes, crablets. I love them. Is that right? Well, I guess my favorite food is... Crablet. <laughs> no, it's not crablets. It should be. Crablet is the finest food in the world. Uh. In fact, I think they should make National Crablet Day. She's like a whole different person. 
It's nice that Sophie can be so passionate about something so simple. Last year I got really into omelets and I don't think I ever made myself a crablet, but one of my favorite go-tos was um, smoked salmon with cream cheese. That is a mighty fine omelet. Just a little bit of um, Cholula on top for some spice. Yeah, it is a fun kind of interplay between the post-battle conversations and the skits as different sorts of optional or semi-optional conversations, I isn't it? Of my past. I hadn't thought of that. All I can remember is being with Asbel and the others when we were children. They say I died protecting them. What does it mean to die? And why does it scare me? Uh, Tales of the Abyss wants to know your location. Everything is so cloudy. So dark. I want to remember, but I'm afraid. Will I die again someday? And then meet everyone again like I did this time? Another very Buddhist contemplation here. I refuse to trust people I know nothing about. Come on, Hubert. You still doubt them? Ha! Huh. If anything, my doubts have grown more urgent. Those two are hiding something. Mark my words. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Grail. about? Well, yes, I suppose I do. So you don't like me? Huh? I don't know anything about myself. Does that mean you dislike me? No, it's not. You're not hiding things from us, Sophie. You just can't remember. It's different from what they're doing. So it's okay to not know if it's because the person forgot? Um, well, yes, I suppose so. Sophie, where's all this coming from? Nowhere. It's nothing. Oh, you just want to reach out and give her a big hug. Or touch her on the forehead, as the case may be. Prone to worry. Interesting, too, since she's wrestling with the way in which she's hiding certain aspects of herself from herself to then have the model of Hubert saying that's something that is untrustworthy or you ought not to expect of others to help her wrestle with the idea of, oh, well, maybe if I'm having trouble deciding whether or not it makes sense to remember and engage with my past, there are actually reasons that speak in favor of being brave and doing it, even if I'm afraid of what I might find. When I was a young lad, my friends used to call me the Karta King. That's because my passion for magic Karta was unmatched. One day, my old woman told me to throw away that useless junk. When I refused, she took matters into her own hands one day when I was out. Don't worry. I'm not about to ask you to give me your magic Karta cards or anything. I wouldn't dream of it, elderly man. I just want to see some again. The more you show me, the better I'll reward you. Ooh. Ah, yes, there's nothing quite like Magic Carta cards. Fabulous. In this country, the army doesn't care if you're a man or a woman. Everyone serves Fendel to the best of their ability in whatever capacity fits them best. Meaning of life, meaning of work. Oh, were there more rewards we could get from him? Yeah, I'll go back. 
I thought that exhausted all the ones we had so far. Yeah, I think that's what we got so far. SSR, right? Like, oh, everyone can serve the state in their own way, and that's empowering. Value of work, value of labor. Don't think about the consequences. Bye, Pottery. Enjoy dinner. Make yourself something good. See you when we see you. Oh, I see. It didn't clock. I didn't clock that it uh, showed you more of the available rewards. My little sister requested a transfer to a frontline infantry unit. I tried to stop her, but she won't listen to me. Jesus. <laughs> I think cheap iPhones is the tip of the iceberg for this kind of regime. Based on all the talk of war machines and mechs. <laughs> More like iRobot than iPhone but not in a cool Will Smith way. Wow. Yeah, so you have some pretty direct experience with that, Doug. So this is Fennel's capital, huh? Yeah, crazy how in some ways that history is so far away from us and in other ways it is much more recent than one might imagine. Structure is thick here. Steam is the main source of power in Zafford. The fog you see comes from their machines. You sure studied up on this place. It's common sense to know about your potential enemies. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Happy ending. I did not take that to be a joke at all. I imagine maybe he didn't take it as a joke at the time either. <laughs> it's a tough joke to make. Is Strata planning to war with Fendel? Yeah, me too. That possibility has been under some consideration. But that would leave Lond caught in the middle. We can discuss such matters later. We should go before the guards become suspicious. Right. Keep your eyes peeled for anyone who might be able to help us. Another great music track for setting the scene. You are under arrest. You're not from Fendel. Who are you? Damn. Step aside. I'll take care of this. We've just returned from a mission in Windor. Windor? What kind of an idiot do you take me for? My name is Malik Caesar. I have my credentials right here. Well, this... All seems to be in order. I trust this clears up our little misunderstanding. Now, with your leave, we must report to Chancellor Eigen. You're meeting with the Chancellor? Yes, and I would hate to inform him that you were the reason we were delayed. Please, no! I'm sorry. Come on, man. Let's get out of here. Malik. <laughs> I'm surprised they fell for that. Sir, please. Explanation, How please. did you get Fendolian military credentials? I had them prepared some time ago, just in case. You had them prepared, huh? Let's hurry up. There's no telling when they might catch on. Look, a distraction. Old military credentials. Fendel military credentials that were in Malik's pocket. They're very grimy and worn. Hold it right there. Don't move a muscle until I say so. It is nice. I'm surprised it took me as long as I did to clock that those little speech bubble indicators um, set off specific scenes or side quests or things like that. Good to know what to look out for. Ugh. 
<laughs> mommy. I'm not your mommy. Who are you? I'm Sophie. Sorry for coming in like this. We'll let you rest. No, please stay. Mommy's late getting home and I'm hungry. I'm lonely. What? Jesus, maybe I'm hungry. Okay then, we'll stay. Great. So your name's Lara, huh? You really always watching the house all by yourself? I could never do that. Yeah, at that age? Mommy's busy working for the government, but don't worry, I'm fine here. Wow, most children wouldn't exhibit such dedication. Right, Pascal? You can do it, Pascal. Thanks. I wonder. Hehe. <laughs> so what do you guys do? Do you work for the government like mommy? Well, uh, we... It's a secret. Very hush-hush. Can't tell anyone. Oh, cool. You're spies, huh? Can I be a spy with you guys when I grow up? We'll think about it. Yay! Hey, Lara. How come you don't get out of bed? Sophie, that's rude. It's okay. I'm just sick is all. I've been this way my whole life. Although I'd like to go outside just once. I'm sorry, Lara. It's okay. I'm used to it. But it's going to be lonely when you guys leave. Maybe even a little scary. Here. What's this? Think of it as me. Sophie? You're giving this to me? Really? Yep. It does add another pall over the area, doesn't it? The idea that there's just something about living in the bitter and cruel conditions of this climb with the government and the, the just unrelenting cold and wind and everything that just creates a constant sense of sickness among the people, both literal and physical. Yep. Oh, thank you. I'll always treasure it. I'll bring more later. Lots more, so you'll never be lonely again. <laughs> Are you upset? No, I'm happy. Thank you, Sophie. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, we're out of here for real this time. Please come visit again. Okay. See you next time. Just when you think you've got someone figured out, they go and surprise you. I never expected to see Sophie do something like that. She did a good thing. You should be pleased. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Here you go. Eek! It looks like a scary monster. Why would you give me this? It's okay. It's just an imp. It's not scary. Oh, this is sweet. So we can give her all of the uh, the plushies that we find that are little allusions to other games and such as friends to keep her company. I love that. Looks like it's a girl. So I guess it would be an impet. <laughs> I've lost track of how many we had. Here you go. It's so heavy. What is it? Does it have a name? It's um, Bush Baby. Only ancient people know about it. Hello, Mr. Bush Baby. Nice to meet. Oh, it's so heavy. Please take it off me. I <laughs> uh, like the classically heavy Bush Baby statues. Here you go. How cute. But what is it? 
Uh, Noko. It says cats eat them. Hello, Noko. Welcome to my home. Can I eat you too? You're back. I'm afraid I'm not feeling too well today. Oh, but we're building a repertoire of friends for her. A menagerie of friends, I should say. Oh, well, how nice to have a little heartwarming bastion in the middle of all this cold. A shard of hope, as I was hoping for at the beginning of the stream. I would say this certainly qualifies. Yeah, I know I've mentioned this before in a few contexts, but um, my own unusual window into Russia and the Soviet Union was just, um, that I, I happened to stumble into the opportunity to... Lloyd Irving, wake up! I love you, Rain. To learn about... Um, the Russian Orthodox Church and their tradition and practices of bell ringing in Russia, um, because my uh, the the school I attended for undergrad happened to uh, have been instrumental in preserving one of like the I think two or three, if that, full sets of um, Russian bells that survived all of the um, like religious purges that happened um, under the auspices of communism and eliminating all religion in the country and everything like that. Um, so I, I did a cultural exchange over there more than once and it was really interesting to learn about the country and its history and the relationship between you know, the individual people and their, uh, their various like local communities and kind of the larger monolithic government that everyone thinks about over there. <laughs> I... You joke, but you know that I could talk and have talked for hours on end and in articles on end on everything that that game taught me. So <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time. That'll take up the rest of our stream and then some, Grail. Three of my men disappeared on Mount Zavhurt, but someone rescued them. Apparently they caught a glimpse of some sort of facility on the side of the mountain. Ah, there's always a lot to learn from events that happen on snowy mountains in these games. Tales of the Abyss, once again, pinging for your location. <laughs> what a cat. The crazed looking cat seems to want fish. Sea bream, all right. Thank you. Hey, welcome home from... Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. I mistook you for the girl who lives here. I worry about the girl who lives here, so I come over and check in on her from time to time. Doll within a doll! <laughs> for all those who are not yet clear on whether or not it was a direct allusion to the USSR, we have Russian nesting dolls. The dubious what a strange man. doll. There's another little doll inside it. There is something I should tell you, brother. Yeah? What is it? Someone within our group has yet to reveal his true nature. <laughs> it's a good question, like Grail. this doll, you always see the same face, no matter how many layers you expose. You're awfully proud of yourself for coming up with that, aren't you? This is no joke. Sorry. I will not be beguiled by this dubious man, nor do I intend to protect him. But, but he's one of us. Such naivete. Mark my words. There could be a connection between this man and King Richard's actions. That is quite a, a moving symbol for a lot of the way in which this game, I suppose a lot of games, but um, I'd say especially Tales of Graces meditates on unfurling the nature of the people in the party. Peeling off their layers, yet always seeing the same face. Again, very kind of Buddhist in terms of uh, the, the spiritual discovery that happens through reincarnation, things like that. <laughs> there is an imposter among us. I missed a discovery. Yeah, well, I was just kind of winding in this direction. I wasn't sure if it was the right way to go, but I can go back here as well. This is the way we entered, right? I know we haven't been down this path yet. The tower's original name was Iron Spike. You can even see it from the port, right? 
Hey, do you want to buy a plushie? I made it myself. A cat's plushie. It's only for 10 gold. Please. Really, thank you. A stuffed toy of a cat's. It's nice to have around when you're feeling lonely. And now, we know exactly whom to give it to. It's a cat, how cute. Oh wait, is it a dog? What's its name? Uh, Cats. Hello cats, welcome to my home. Welcome to you too, Sophie. Oh, and that one gets to stay with her in her bed. Love it. How to make a plushie? Well, I made it using dual eyes. Ooh, can we make more plushies using dual eyes? Will the wonders never cease? Here you go, it's the latest order. This is a pretty big list. You planning to invade a country or something? Nah, this is for, you know, that. Oh, right, that. So, uh, you think it's gonna work out? Eh, they don't tell me nothing. But I did manage to overhear a juicy piece of gossip. Lay it on me. Apparently, the big boss at the Ministry of Science has been making regular trips out of the city. That means we're close. Hmm, big boss, Ministry of Science, trips outside the city. So it's okay to get my hopes up? Absolutely, my friend. Things are about to get real busy around here. All right, then. I'll be back to pick up the goods. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, no. It was Metal Gear all along. The Ministry of Science. Is something happening soon? Sorry, it's been a little problem and we've had to close up shop until it's resolved. The raw materials we mined on Mount Zavhurt were lost when we were attacked by a strange monster. A strange monster, you say? Oh, that poor child all by herself again. Oh, I'm sorry. How can I help you? It's Metal Gear all the way down. Mixer's all charged. Anything we can craft. Oh, I think we're okay. I think we just did that. Sherry acquired the do-gooder title. All right. The foreman yelled at me again this morning for almost an hour. I really have to get it together. Proper child labor. We know. We're almost there. The rumors are true, so just hang on a little longer. Something's giving these folks hope. Presumably some plot to fix or get their Valkanus careers working? Is there any way you can provide a larger ration of Creus for the children? It says Fendel's, Fendel Tower's original name was Iron Spike. I had no idea. Yes, you did, Asbel. That NPC we talked to in this very map told us that. You're an odd bunch, aren't you? I better not catch you causing any trouble. Well, we're just going to the end. How much trouble can we really cause? No more suffering. It's difficult for me to believe Strata and Fendel are on the verge of war. So, what will happen if there's a war? Is everyone going to die? We won't let that happen. Asbel won't, I won't, even Hubert won't. But whenever I think about dying, I get scared. It's like my whole chest tightens. What? I wonder if that's a part of her remembering the time she protected us. Come here, Sophie. I'm sure you just had a bad dream. There's nothing for you to worry about. We're here for you, no matter what happens, okay? It's our turn to make sure you're out of harm's way. Sharia? We've already gone through so much. I don't want anyone mm. to have to suffer again. Oh, sweet. I see. That's a great point. Well, it was fairly obvious. What's going on? 
We're checking out Asbel. Doesn't he seem a little strange to you? Maybe. Guess I should just ask him. Hey, Asbel! Hmm? Listen, you've been acting all distant lately. Did something happen? Well, Yeah, Pascal? very ominous. Yeah? The truth is, it's... Surprise! Huh? What? Happy, Happy birthday! birthday oh my gosh! What? You guys are the best! Something like that? Something like what? <laughs> Is it supposed to actually be her birthday? That felt a little ambiguous. Can't think of another birthday celebration in a Tales game I've played to date. Yeah, the idea of someone who is wrestling with the reality of death having uh, experienced and being able to recollect it is so just wonderfully Buddhist and, and spiritual and pressing for a game such as this. Definitely something going on with that chick. You know the thing that's happening? Word is, even the Chancellor is going to be there. But what is the thing? That's privileged information, you know. Don't be spreading it around. Even though I just told you a complete stranger. Care to warm your bones with a shot of chili pepper liqueur? Oh, oh, pardon me. We can't serve minors. You can serve Pascal since she's like 22 or something. <laughs> a long, long time ago, well, okay, around 20 years ago, some young soldiers staged a rebellion. Chancellor Eigen was leading our country even back then. Ah, a long time Chancellor figure. All our rooms are toasty warm. Rocker Gong Fur, there's that request. Don't hurt the creature and don't die. Yeah. Raw materials. Oh yes, and these are the materials that um, the shop was saying it lost. The equipment vendor, right. All right. Well, you have some quests to keep track of at least. Yeah, it's so hard to adjudicate age between these games, right? I almost find myself thinking, it would be, oh, we threw the trash away. That's great. I, I had no idea you could do that. That's very cool. Um, it almost makes me think or, or want to sit down and think about like, is there a way to just see age as being more of a, like a local phenomenon to the worlds. Like the worlds are just so different and people grow up within them in such different ways that it's, it's almost a futile exercise to try to compare the age of characters in different games. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like for exactly the reason you're talking about Grail, it's, it, it's almost impossible to wrap your head around like the comparative age or maturity of someone like, you know, tier as, you know, uh, a um you know someone who grew up with van in Yulia city and was a locrian general and all of those things versus someone like rain who was a half elf and everything that came with that it's like apples and oranges almost that's right that's the one constant pottery <laughs> no matter what the culture no matter what it means to grow up or to be an adult you're only allowed to start drinking when you hit 21. <laughs> the one multiversal constant. Seeds of the bloody rose flower. They're extremely strict about who's allowed to visit the Sea of Ice up north. What's the Sea of Ice, you ask? Well, I was just about to. It's a frozen stretch of sea that extends north of Zavhurt. I gathered up all the trash in my room and threw it in the tra in the inn's trash bin. You wouldn't believe the praise. You didn't get any praise. But uh, don't go leaving your trash in my room, you hear? You 
Sure, yeah, that's another good point in terms of age meaning something different based on the actual uh, marking of time in the different worlds, too. Which also dovetails with you know, different species like elves and half-elves in the games where they pertain, having just different lifespans and different concepts of growing up. We don't have this. We don't have this. I guess I don't think I walked over the save point to see if there was a skip. No, no skip. Well, right, I, I think that was the joke. Toidles, what are you doing here? The area ahead is blocked off. Suspicious. Although this whole area, I think, could be categorized under the heading suspicious. Fendel Tower. Not that away. Ah, oh, there you go. See another subtle cameo that I would have missed otherwise. Good call out, Grail. That seems to be just, uh, the, the more of those we pick out, just tales of Grace's particular language for doing cameos. In such a different vein to what we just saw with Tales of Berseria, right? Where, um, not, not that it got in your way, but it was very direct and explicit about them. Gray skies and white rooftops as far as the eye can see. Such is the scenery for the residents of Zafford. There you go. Also, Judith by way of Ruti. Or Ruti by way of Judith, I guess one would say. The tower's original name. Okay. So now we do know. It was Spike Tower, right? Iron Spike. Good. Glad I checked. Was down here, I think. Yes. Today on the New Game Plus edition of Aaron Tries to Spell on the First Try. Book of Finesse! It doubles the odds of stealing items. Its cost is based on time, so work quickly. All right, that strikes me as a good one. Yeah, and I feel like it's a nice level of challenge uh, and steps so that it invites you to fully explore the town and check out all the nooks and crannies, but you also don't feel as if you're sent on a wild goose chase or it just distracts you too much to the point that you lose the flow of the broader journey. It's a tough balance to strike, I think. <laughs> That's how you know we're spending too much time together, Pottery. Even the, uh, the nuances of the reactions to different things can be anticipated. Or put differently, we're all delightfully consistent. Fendel Tower would be a truly terrifying place to sneak into. Now the real question, because I don't remember this, is, uh, is Bloody Rose one of the Sordian arts that Ruti learns through at white because then really if you want to push the glasses up to the bridge of your nose and say actually it would really be more of an at white art than a, an art assigned to anyone else or originating in anyone else. Yeah. 
Interesting. Hmm. Looks almost like a uh, a researcher's lab with all these different pieces of tech strewn about. That one looks reminiscent of um, the ruins that we saw um, underneath Wallbridge, the Martian ruins. Yeah, interesting. What an interesting residence. Another titles. There's so many here. Travelers and sailors have used fossilos to navigate since ancient times. We turtles has too. Come again. Yeah. It's almost enough to make me want to go load back up my save and see if she has it in, uh, in my playthrough. Just to get to the bottom of this. We have to know. Halt! Proceeding beyond this point is strictly prohibited. No. I, I guess you can tell me what to do. My stupid heater died. Might as well sit around outside for all the good it'll do me now. I wish the big boss would hurry up with his grand plan. Don't you think? Actually, forget it. If I'm going to be this cold, I may as well start spending my breaks in Fendel Tower. Grand plan. It's another one with uh, a nice spattering of different levels uh, and ways in which to navigate between them, like we were talking about back in the, um, the research-oriented town whose name escapes me. They say Mount Zafford is the most inhospitable place in the world. If you're not impeccably prepared, you'll be a frozen corpse in no time. Ooh, boy, I hope we don't have to go there for any reason. I know, and I remember the last time the Fossilus came up way earlier in the playthrough, I was looking forward to learning more about it, and I feel as though we still haven't, and I'm growing less confident that we will get a substantial explanation at some point. But again, it's pacing for this game. Hard to wrap your head around. I mean... Level 34, so we can expect to certainly get more explanation of some things before all is said and done. It's just interesting, especially given the kind of, um, the, the range of different focuses that you get in the narrative uh, back and forth, what may or may not end up being explained based on what ends up inside or outside of focus. Bottomless pipe, piping up. It's like a whole town full of pipes. I can't imagine what it must have taken to construct all of this. Stop that, Sharia. A person could really get hurt if they fell from this height. Oh, you're worried about me? Oh, look at all the shiny little coins at the bottom. You see? I knew she'd end up copying you. I should have known that was the reason. Huh? Asbel, please, just notice me. Acknowledge me. All right. I think that completes a full lap of the capital. Yeah, there must be a disgruntled townsperson whom we missed. Ah, there we go. You weren't there before. Did they send you to bring me back? Oh, no. Thank goodness. I was worried there for a minute. Lately, my department's been doing a lot of work with the Vulcanus. I had to get out of there before the stress drove me insane. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's all for the good of Fendal. All right, I'll get back to work now. But don't tell anyone about that Vulcanus comment, okay? I'm uh, not supposed to mention it. Work with the Valkanus. It sounds like Fendel really is conducting experiments on their Valkanus, but we still don't know where it is. I'm still surprised the Amarsians are apparently helping them. Me too. I thought they were all extinct. Man, this is bad. This 
is really, really bad. What are you getting so worked up about? See, Bendel's Valkanus is kind of wonky, so it's really hard to extract Elith from it. It's also really dangerous to extract Elith from it. And if this little experiment of theirs fails, boom. Um, what do you mean, boom? I mean, boom! Like the entire country of Fendel being wiped off the map! That kind of boom! Chernobyl, but JRPG. Remember that crater we saw on the way here? That was when a Krius about this big decided to explode. Oof. Tiny Krius, huge crater. Now, think about what would happen if the entire Valkanus exploded. Jesus. And even for a JRPG, when there are so many world-ending cataclysms, this strikes me as a, a particularly vivid portrait of existential risk. Maybe because it's just so much more rooted in the consequences of just day-to-day -day political and governmental decision-making. So it's, it's uh, in a certain sense, more believable and relatable than a lot of the cataclysmic crises that you get at the end of JRPGs. How do you know all this, Pascal? Because I made the crater. Well, there it is. I think we all knew that at this point, right? That's why I know this is bad. I'm pretty sure they're using my research for their Valkanus experiment. I knew it as soon as I saw those soldiers' weapons at Warrior's Roost. The principles are totally based on my work. But wait, I thought they were using a Marcian technology. Yeah, they are. I'm an Amarcian. Oh. What? Oh, did I not tell you that? <laughs> I just I mentioned it at some point. You're too distracted with trying to touch Sophie. I have an idea. Let's go visit the Amarcian Enclave. There's got to be something useful there. We might even learn where the Valkanus is. Is it nearby? Well, it's not super nearby, but, you know, it's in Fendel. Huh. Well, I suppose it can't hurt. Hold on. Why have you been keeping your Amarcian origins a secret? What is it you don't want us to know? Huh? I didn't tell you because you didn't ask. And you? That little show you put on earlier was far too convincing. Perhaps there is more truth there than you would care to have us know. Hubert, stop it. Oh, right. I suppose you don't find this suspicious in the least. It's all right, Asbel. Your brother is correct. I am originally from Fendel. However, this is the first time I've been back in over 20 years. I knew it. You still want to travel with them after all this? Malik lied about his origins, and Pascal thinks we need to ask if she's a member of a distinct <laughs> race. I suppose lies and deception just come naturally to these people. I'm sorry, Asbel, but I cannot abide allies who engage in deceit. I will go no further with them at my side. Hubert, wait. There they are! Malik Caesar has been dead for years! Now identify yourself! Interesting. So that's how the records show me. <laughs> I am hereby placing you and your companions under arrest! Oh, time to hit the road, guys. Goodbye! Oh my god. Real Immersion, what a title. I want to see the description of that one. Turns out she was born and raised among a group that thrived on knowledge and technology. Which does, of course, then provide right away further context uh, and raise further questions as to what it is about the resonance of her bloodline, presumably, well, not presumably, now we know the bloodline of the Martians with um, the Summon Spirit equivalent, the, the Elith Glyphs, with which she's been resonating and forming pacts. That is an interesting moment for being able to double back to the end. It struck me as the kind of classic moment in a JRPG where, oh, well, okay, so it's, it's just that soldiers are hostile, so we can choose to go back, but it doesn't change things in that context. What's wrong with you? We're being <laughs> soldiers. 
I think I was on the same page as Hubert with that one. Sherry, you're always all, don't forget to brush, right, Sophie? Right. So now you decide to start listening? <laughs> oh. That was so unbelievably silly. I'm glad we went back for it. Have any other requests? Oh. Oh. Might as well save while we're here. Very funny. Worth going back for. It is interesting. I don't know off the top of my head how to square this with the broader themes that the game is thinking about yet, but it strikes me as pretty interesting how Hubert, like we were talking about a bit last time, was the one who was exiled from his own family and therefore had to think really self-consciously in a way that a child oftentimes doesn't about what he wants out of family and whom he's connected to as a kid. And now he's also the one uh, with kind of the, the most aggressive grip on reality amongst this ragtag group of different people with different origins where they are very much just kind of going through the world and focusing on their quest without sort of a, uh, a willingness to open up to each other or even the presumption that that's something that is warranted or conducive to their quest. And it's only given his particular spec uh, perspective on his past and how he's come to terms with that to navigate the world over time, that he raises that context and brings it into issue in a way where it would otherwise remain unspoken. I think that's an interesting way of advancing the party and, and kind of forcing exposition, excuse me, forcing exposition, if you want to think about it from that narrative perspective based on the particularities of his character. I'm gonna rest at the end while we're here. I didn't realize that the party was a little gassed. I'm still interested in learning more about that. Um, it was so interesting how we got that hook with the side conversation at their manor way earlier in the story that there was more by way of explanation as to why Aston sent Hubert away, but I still haven't had that followed up on yet. I'm excited to find out more about what was going on way back in the day. You need to study up on the basics. Well, thankfully, those folks seemed much more manageable than the Ropers. All right, away we go. Focus, this will be tight. Maybe part of it with Hubert too, just thinking aloud is, I feel like there's an interesting complex of like the fear of abandonment by family and so very insecure attachment to others and also the feeling that like he'll be betrayed for instrumental reasons and used by others in the way that 
he was betrayed by his birth family and from his perspective, regardless of what the actual reason may or may not have been, shipped off for their own reasons that were beyond his understanding um, and outside what they explained to him to another country and another family. And so that perhaps has given him like an interestingly instrumentalist insistence on everyone being really transparent on their origins and motives for traveling together because if he doesn't understand like with clear eyes and firm understanding why it is that everyone is as a matter of fact aligned with one another he doesn't trust that like they can maintain their alignment which again is, is sad because you can see how informed that is in probably pretty unhealthy ways by his trauma but it's also useful for shoring up a party that seems to be in in many ways withdrawn into its individual members rather than collaborating openly and being um, proactively forthcoming with details about their past. Focus, this will be tight. Well, I understand what you're saying, but again, I'm going to say, with a challenge like that, you're kind of complaining, saying like, oh man, yeah, you know, Dark Souls, you think it's hard, but it's impossible if you're only playing with one hand and no armor and, you know, a, a broken weapon. <laughs> I respect the hell out of you for doing it, but I will never miss the opportunity to remind you that you absolutely do it to yourself, my friend. <laughs> Hey, Pottery, welcome back, my friend. Hope you made yourself something tasty for dinner. I'll keep on getting stronger. All right, it was a long and winding road, but lining up between the uh, the streams literary study and your challenge playthrough, Grail. We knew we'd make it back eventually. Okay. We should be safe here. What do we do now? Are you sure you don't want to go to the Amarcian Enclave? We're pretty much headed in that direction already anyway. It's a little cold. But it's still super nice. Come on. Stop. Let go of me. <laughs> I once spotted a person coming down from the mountains. Rumor has it that there's some sort of town or installation up there. But I think that's crazy talk. It probably won't come up again. Those things, Grail. You mean the, uh, the Ropers? I shouldn't utter their name. They'll probably manifest on the snowpath here. Focus! This will be tight! It's amazing to me that you looked right past the joke of saying that someone who speaks with his back would say I'm back. I haven't even seen the reference to that that you keep insisting we need to unlock, and I know that just because of all of your callouts. 
Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Ugh. You're gonna die, clown! <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel trying to compare myself to virtually any Tails character. <laughs> I can aspire, but I can't really compare. Yeah, I'm kind of getting that vibe, Grail. Oh my god, stay alive. Dum dum supporters. I just try to see the good in them even if it comes up in a redemption arc as opposed to their base character. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> but I take the point. <laughs> no, see, that's the game telling us we can make it through without grinding. Giving us a life bottle. I'm not gonna grind. I won't miss enemy encounters, but I don't I don't wanna grind if we can avoid it at all. And we have cooking to keep us uh Stabilized at least a bit across um, across random encounters. What does it mean? Does one of you know what it means when these cooking effects are in red? Do we need to do something to unlock them that we don't just intrinsically get by consuming the meal? Because that sounds exhausting. We could go back to town, but we just left town. If push comes to shove, we will. Emperor's Claw. Focus, this will be tight. Well, it looked almost like the kind of um, word coloring that you get when you're not able to use something new. I hope that's what it means. If that's the case, I'll just prioritize those. I shouldn't have looked down to read your message, that's my bad. Leave us alone. This is what happens when you misjudge your foe. Well, when we survive the battles, we do get lots of goodies and perks. Enough to keep me motivated to improve our performance. For now, at least. Focus! This will be tight! <laughs> 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 Okay, 
Not bad, don't you think? Oh, so it's just indicating that it doesn't pertain outside of battle. But that doesn't mean we have to do something like using them inside of battle, right? It just means that it's only going to apply in battle. That's interesting. Although, well, no, but see, like something like the Peach Parfait, it indicates that its effect is in battle, and that's not coded red. So I don't think that's what it means. That was a good thought, but I don't think that's what it means. Focus, this will be tight. No man, all the Elif breaks. That out after this then. At least that time Asbel killed one enemy before he immediately died again. Oh, Jesus Christ! Really fair and balanced. I really like it. Yeah, it is bad. It's a very good point. It does lend much more credibility to the idea that this area is not meant for any sort of human life or thriving for all of the enemies and even the people who would survive here as soldiers to be so brutal and unforgiving. So what does happen if we put a dish like... Um, experience in here. Oh, so now it's not ratted out, so... Is it just indicating that that only procs when it uh, is used from the mixer? Let's try that. title to be looking for it on. That gives us Phantom Dance, which is something new. Dagger Slash, Sword Assault, and Rapier Rush. We have a lot of titles that will give her new arts. Rejuvenate? Does that 
I don't think it lets us go down and actually look at them. That sounds like something that could be... Well, it sounds more like revitalized to me, but it sounds like something that's healing at least. So, let's do that for the moment. Now, after all that, I meant to heal the party, but I forgot. Trembling because all of these enemies are the worst, Sophie. <laughs> How does Malik already have no health? <laughs> I just fully healed everyone before the battle. <laughs> Bro. Oh my god. The harshest, and it's only getting the harsherer. It is nice knowing that we're on the path to um, to a turtles at least. In fact, in pursuit of that, I might try to see if we can get out of this battle, just because like, we're going to be screwed otherwise. Oh my god, come on. Well, I'm trying to bail. <sighs> Fucking hate this. Alright. Didn't like that at all. Wow, it doesn't even let you retry. Good. Good. Really good. Really good. I loved that. That was great. Alright. That's enough of that. That's where I draw the line. Yeah, evidently. so bad there yourself, Asbel. It was not great work. He can't stay alive. Honestly, if he were voiced by anyone else, I would not be bothering with him in the party right now. Yeah, we do know what title to give to Sophie. Let's do that. Um, it was over here, right? Yeah. That'll help. Probably one of those things also where playing on hard would be easier with more human allies because that's the thing that was exhausting me. Like the other three members of the party could not figure out how to stay alive during those battles. 
so I just look up and like half of the party will be dead within the first 10 seconds. Which is not a great thing. Teamwork is the key. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm sure that's not helping either. Oh, I was also I liked the idea of putting that uh, experience boosting one in the mixer. She's tenacious, which I imagine, as we've spoken about before, has to be, um, she surely was designed that way as a reflection of her broader character and role in the world, which is very cool to appreciate. Remember your training. Yeah, I hadn't even really schematized Sophie in my head as a caster, since in my head I think of her more as having all of her melee arts, but I suppose especially on higher difficulties, um, as we just witnessed, there's a lot of stress on her to manage with healing arts, which puts her into a casting role. And then with Pascal as a caster, that makes sense. There's not a lot they can do to manage at that point. Right on the money, buddy. Oh, that's true. I hadn't even thought to mention Malik because he is even more modeled in my head as a melee artist, but right, he seems to be trying to do a lot of casting also. First life bottle we've had to Sorry use. About that. It was just because I was being greedy during an enemy Aleph strike. Or Aleph burst, whatever you call it. Victory is ours. occurred to me after all our jokes of limiting Malak. I guess that could turn him into more of a melee fighter. Well, we'll see. I'm okay with just running it on moderate for a while and seeing how we develop. when you misjudge your foe. Let's go! Demon Bang! Slash! 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 Slash!
So if you learned to rejuvenate, well, that ought to help at least. Oh, a whole little skip. Okay, that was crazy. I've never seen a monster disguise itself as a treasure chest. Oh, girl, I could tell you stories. It must be a natural mimic. The will to survive is a frighteningly powerful thing. Oh, and what a cool way in which to introduce it, putting it in this kind of harsh landscape. It's will to survive. Hey, look, I left a bag behind. There's a bunch of stones inside. It could be Creus or maybe Ore. Do you think it's something that monster ate? Hmm? Wow, this Creus is amazing. It's like the Elif inside is generating pure heat. Oh-ho! A pact has formed. We weren't even looking for it. Number three. Pascal, what did you do? Nothing. The contract has been fulfilled. I am Blood Flame, mighty warden of the Fire Dragon. Now that we're learning a little bit more about her and her Amartian history, I'm tuned in more to the exact wording of that. It's not as if she's forming a pact with them herself. What they talk about is a fulfillment of a contract, as if it's something that they had perhaps uh, arrived at in the past with the Martians and is now being made good on by Pascal in one way or another. I remain interested. What's happening? That's what I'm asking. The Creus has responded to your blood. My power is yours to use as you wish. I look forward to the day I can once again descend to this world. Go and do not perish before them. Whoops, he's gone. Are you okay, Pascal? Yeah, I feel great, stronger than ever. It's like somebody crammed their power into me. It would be a fun thing to try. I mean, you you all know exactly how I feel about the real life JRPG party. It would just be, yeah, <laughs> I think a technical hurdle as much as anything, which has certainly impeded me in the past. But yeah, we can uh, we can look into it. If I start thinking about it now, we can make a game plan by the time we get to Vesperia. So not a bad thing to think about, friendos. It's an odd way to put it. How about pumped? Captain, you're not helping. Ah, and there are the raw materials. Fantastic. So we can return those to the, uh, the equipment shop as well. Title awarded to one who is contracted with the Ruby Warden Bloodflam. Although the description of the title does make it sound as if she has formed a contract with it, so, hmm. Every time I think we're moving toward an answer, this particular game raises more questions. That's a little disappointing. I was uh, assuming based on my models of the spirits in my head that she would have more than three to learn. Although that's interesting, three kingdoms, three spirits. Um, maybe, yeah, three, three elements of Elith, one of which is uh, segregated within each realm, wind, water, and, and fire. Uh, it's got me more interested about the underlying nature of this world and the way in which its energy is uh, partitioned. My radishes! I admit, I had no idea Amarsians lived on Mount Zaphert. Captain Malik, what do you think the Amarsian Enclave is like? Why not ask someone who lived there? Me? 
Hmm, how to explain it? Well, it's a place with lots of folks that are just like me. I can't wait. I thought she'd go to you for support, Asbel. But it looks like she's turning to her radishes. <laughs> Journal entry for the day. It has become apparent that when Pascal doesn't care about something, her long-winded explanations become very brief. Let's get this that one was for the lady next door. Who is this lady? What was she doing next door? I've been continually saying Amartians, but it's Amarsians, as that, uh, that last skit tells us. So I'll try to reprogram my mouth to say that. This is no time for their dilly-dallying. We need to hurry. Hmm? Where is everyone? Did they get lost? Damn it. This is precisely why I hate traveling with them. Asbel! Sophie, Sharia, Pascal, <laughs> Captain Malik. Wait, did something happen to them? I can't go on like this. I have to find them. Little bro, where are you? Pascal, <laughs> Pascal. Hey, little bro, don't run off like that. Yeah. Yikes. Didn't I tell you it was dangerous to run around on the snow? Well then, perhaps next time you could mention it sooner. But never mind. What about the others? Did you find any of them? Find them? Wait a minute. Isn't that my line, little bro? Huh? By the time we realized it, you were gone. We've been looking everywhere. What are you talking about? That makes no sense. I was right in front of you. Yeah, but you were totally walking in the wrong direction. I don't think that's true. Ah, oh, don't sweat it. Everybody gets lost at some point. Now, let's get back to our friends. March! Is it an allegory for Hubert's childhood? Probably, but it was an interesting and unusual skit all the same. Ah, human controlling rapide, you say? I wake! <laughs> Is it not going to let us go here yet? That's frustrating. I got all excited. True, I did find on my playthrough that it's very hard to be damaged if you can't be hit. Funny how that works. Yes, it's a little less necessary, this Toidles, now that I've made the concession of difficulty level, but it's still nice to have access to it all the same. Oh, that's a nice one to put on the katana. I'm happy for that as much as anything. Oh, yes. I mean, had we missed Blood Flum, I would have been very sad. And nice to stumble into it when I was not expecting it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's good enough for now. Got a need for speed, Pottery. It's in the name. Repeat. It's gotta be spammable. That's what he's all about. <laughs>
true. One thing you learn pretty quickly in Miyazaki's games, too. Your attack stats don't matter if you can't hit the enemy. And vice versa. You don't need heavy armor if you never get hit. I'll keep on getting stronger. Uh, the technical term is get good, thank you very much. I forget if I mentioned this, but my buddy Matt, who will be here in a couple weeks, uh, is also in the midst of his first ever Dark Souls playthrough, which is a lot of fun because he's keeping me and Dan up to date on his progress. He beat Ornstein and Smo today, so proud of him for that. Uh, if you know, you know. Although I'm sure at this point, uh, even people who haven't played Dark Souls are nominally familiar with Ornstein and Smo. But yes, most of the time, his recounting will consist of him having a very particular and recognizable issue in the game. And I will think about the best advice to give him and very thoughtfully in a very helpful way right back, Matt. You need to try getting good. Sometimes that is what it comes down to. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I was thinking about it actually because he was saying, um, I think this is everyone's first Dark Souls playthrough, because I remember I did the same thing, and that really rewards this. He's playing like a very heavy character with heavy armor and a giant sword, so you can just eat enemy attacks and hit back twice as hard. Um, so I'm thinking that when he's here, because we're going to do something to play together, or maybe even switch off like the three of us, because Dan will be here as well. I want to give him one of the Miyazaki games that was built in the opposite way. Like, he's played a little bit of Bloodborne, but a very small amount. Um, but he's never played any of Sekiro, and I've been wanting, for my own reasons, to go back to Sekiro for a long time. So I feel like it would be nice to throw him into the deep end with that, especially based on his current build. I can't get enough of that game. Talk about a masterpiece. My, uh, yeah, my first Elden Ring playthrough for the majority of it was very spellcaster heavy. Ended up kind of specking into like a, um, like a spellcasting katana user, which was very fun. Because I will always try to build those into magic swordsmen ever since I went from my, uh, my first heavy Dark Souls build into one that was much more, um, middle of the road weight with big heavy weapon and um, pyromancy, which was such fun. Uh, but yeah, they made magic so fun in that. Especially before they uh, made any um, any patches to it, because I played it right when it came out. And the, uh, I forget the name of the magic, that was just the big Kamehameha beam that was effectively the win button before they uh, nerfed it but it was a very gratifying and cathartic win button after all of the Miyazaki's games that, that I had worked through. Let's get this underway. Take this! Go, go, go. Take this! Go, go, go. <laughs> Always useful on a first run, except in Bloodborne, but I suppose uh, 
I suppose, especially if you go in with that model in your head, like, you get that joke uh, wooden shield early on, and that tells you all you need to know about the game and how it wants you to play it. Which itself is useful as a baseline comparison. <laughs> yeah, more ways than one, isn't it, just... But yeah, in principle, I totally agree with you, Pottery, especially if you play a lot of games in the same uh, design language or genre, like finding a way in with a, like a standard point of comparison, whether that's the same build or even thinking about like we thought about on a couple streams ago, right? Like the different ways in which the Tales games treat mages and magic users and what that says about them. Like it can be really useful to give yourself a frame of reference in that way, I think. Just as a starting point as much as anything. A snowman? Oh no! A dangerous snowman. Snow goblin, in fact. It will take more than that to stand in our way. Gold frames. Ooh, a must have for high class collectors. Hubert. You're getting an upgrade, buddy. We have visitors! I like that too, especially in a, uh, a game inspired by Miyazaki or one of his own games. It is nice to feel like whatever sorts of boss weapons or special discoveries you make, you can actually, like your character has the versatility to put them to use. I mean, of course, especially coming to it from a Tales background, you can always change up your build or do something different in New Game Plus or something like that, but it does change things and perhaps take a little bit out of the experience to feel like with you know, a third of the game's bosses or special items you just have to wait and see what they do and what they feel like later after the fact. <laughs> I keep saying this, I will, I will find a guide on my own also, Grail, because it shouldn't be on you. I'm sorry that it has been, but you've been doing a great job. Appreciate you. I know we're almost at time, but I saw the save point up there, and I know there was a branching path back here, so I want to just make sure we've cleared that out before we go on. Yes, exactly. But then, exactly to your point about versatility, then you, you spec into someone who's only a sword user, and, and then you feel similarly just bummed out whenever you uncover a really cool magic spell and don't have the ability to cast it. That's one of the things that I really quite like about um, just the flow of stat development and upgrading in New Game Plus in Miyazaki's works as well, though, because I feel like in many of the games, especially something like Elden Ring, right, you have all of those diversity uh, factors, and then you also have a really nice cadence where early on in the game, you only have so many um, like attribute points to distribute that you kind of have to spec into one thing or another. But then as you invest more time in the game and get into higher levels, it's much easier and more realistic to spec into at least the minimum requirements for most of the things you pick up. So then you can have that versatility uh, if you want to, you know, emphasize different skill sets or respec if you want to try something else out. Makes it easier to explore in that dimension. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think I think that it comes down to a matter of preference, right? Because like, I I can work my way into thinking that as well. But oh, when a game does magic well, like like especially with Elden Ring, that was the one of the things that really like I marveled at, especially in comparison with the way uh, it had been approached in some of Miyazaki's other works. And I I really did. I reached a point where. I think I had been using swords mostly early on, and I just, as I started to see little glimpses into the magic, I really felt like I was missing out, which is part of why I picked up magic so hard. I bet pumpkins raised in the snow must be especially sweet. Hmm. 
Hubert, are you interested in pumpkins too? Do you want to take some with us? That's more, no, much more niche, necessary. but very fun spells in Hubert Bloodborne too. I appreciated us. the effort I and uh, character they put into that. Hey, is there something you want to ask me, Hubert? It's better to let it out than to bottle it up, you know. Hi, Pottery. Good to see you. For Looking forward to the Friday stream with you, bud. Hmm. How to put this? Go ahead. Speak your mind. If I may be blunt. That skirt is far too short. Huh? <laughs> My skirt? It is you said it audibly this time. Combat. Do you understand how much of your thigh you're revealing? It's an affront to basic public decency. Hey, come on, Hubert. Stop staring at me like that. Well, then you should start dressing more appropriately. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with my hormones. <laughs> Please help. I think Pottery has probably left at this point since he said goodbye, and I know he's the only other resident I think you should leave fan besides me, but there's a, there's a great sketch, and I think you should leave about the honk if you're horny bumper sticker. Comes to mind from that uh, that skit between Sharia and Pascal. Oh, excuse me, Sharia and, uh, and Hubert. I was thinking I need to equip Pascal with this scarf. I don't, I don't know that it's, I mean, it, it might be a sexist consequence, but I read it more as like, he's just so uncomfortable with himself and obsessed with decorum from his time in the military and the structure that gave him, that like, <laughs> that's his only way of knowing how to cope with women at all, which again, is probably sexist after the fact, but I feel like he's not doing it because he like, hates women, but more that he just, like, doesn't understand how to interact. Not bad, don't you think? But maybe we can help him grow by the end of this journey together. It's a JRPG, remember, that's much of the point. Uh, I think we're back to where we were. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss the odd item, but yeah, I think that wraps around to where we were before, so I think if we go up this way. We'll have exhausted the side paths. Yes, yes, I know. You are Harpy, you are Legion. Oh, okay, this is where the save point was before. Cool. This blizzard's strong. The wind's so strong. <sighs> oh, I got to touch Sophie. I <laughs> command thee, oh wind, blow harder still. Suddenly it went back to hard mode. Picking up. Should we continue? The Enclave is a short ways ahead. What you think, Captain? I suggest slow but steady progress to avoid exhaustion. Do you object, Hubert? No, I have absolutely no objection. Mount Zavhurt is the highest mountain in Fendel, after all. Also, I'd just like it's to true. say, your judgment has always been prudent. There's no need for us to question it. Please, after you. Hmm. All right, well, we reached the save point. We explored the mountain. Um, we are just about a time, so don't want to go too far over for everyone's sake and the sake of the schedule. So I think that will be a good point to wrap up, and then we'll have plenty to process and explore next time. Maybe we'll find the Valcanus Creus. Maybe, I, I'm sure, I would be shocked if we didn't learn more about Pascal's past and the nature of the Marcians uh, in whatever uh, epic cosmic opera is unfolding before us. And maybe we'll even find our way back to Richard. I know I would quite like that. Uh, as, as much as he is looming over us in an obscure and threatening way, I think we, uh, we need to find a way to wrap our minds around that and confront it in one way or another. And we seem to be reaching that nice point in the story where you know, it's, if, if we think about the overall cadence, again, not quite sure where we're going in terms of the act structure, but Remember way back when, when Sophie confronted Richard and got her memories back, we talked about how that opened up the potential for new relationships between characters, and that seemed to be the case in some 
intimate and direct interactions between Asbel and Hubert and Asbel and Sharia and people who sort of had pre-existing history on which to draw, um, perhaps emphasized in the fact that Sharia more than once talked about how she wanted to just make everything the way it was in the past. But I think especially when we situate it in that context, there's a sense in which Hubert's confrontation of the party that we saw um, back in Zavhurt really uh, pushes the development into the next phase, saying like, yeah, you know, you're, you're trying to forge these connections, but it's really just drawing on those which were already there. Now we're a more diverse group. Now this is a different moment. We have a different mission. And there are people here who don't have that kind of background context and frankly, nostalgia on which to rely to build their relationships. So we need to be more upfront. We need to find a way to interact in the present moment according to who we are and what we want and not just what we may or may not have been through together, uh, but in a way that allows for the openness of sharing our past just for the sake of everyone, regardless of whether or not they were involved in that past. He gets Malik to share his past, even though you know Asbel and Sophie and Richard and everyone weren't there with Malik 20 years ago here in Fendel. Same with Pascal and her own heritage, right? So it strikes me that we're being pushed in that kind of discomf uh, uncomfortable but important way to the next stage of the party's development. And as always, when you get that kind of catalyst, uh, only further uh, drama, but also insight and catharsis and reward can follow. So I'm excited to see where that goes. <laughs> we, we might get some kind of scene from the prince. Uh, it's anyone's guess. That poor dude seems to be struggling with a lot of stuff, but hey, as the party goes through their struggles and has the net of each other uh, to fall on uh, and to look for for support in figuring these things out, is the beauty of especially a game like this that's so concerned with friendship, right? When push comes to shove, hopefully they'll be able to take all these hard-fought and hard-won lessons of their own and turn it to our poor dude who's struggling with God knows what on his own uh, in isolation. <laughs> oh yeah, that's okay. It's uh, yeah. Sometimes there's rage. Sometimes there's well, there's struggles in the story and the conflict, and struggles with the difficulty too, right? It's uh, it's a combination. You too, Grail. You have a great night. Uh, Padre, always great to see you, my friend. Thanks for stopping by. Doug, great to see you as well. Uh, if you are lurking or if you're hanging out in the VOD on YouTube, always a pleasure. Hope you consider joining the chat live on Twitch at some point. It's a joy to have people in the real life JRPG party. Uh, and we are continuing to unwind this adventure and to determine its shape. I think it's important to take these moments to pause and reflect on it, especially in a game like this, because I think the further we're getting into it and the more amorphous it seems to be in some ways, the more I really do feel like it's encouraging us to actively wrestle with just the right way to see things and to wrap our minds around it at all in the first place, as Sophie is, and in a similar way to what we saw with Tales of Zisteria back when we were working through that, and I talked a lot about how it was encouraging the active interrogation of its story and how we understood the world to be at various points uh, and how we needed to further probe it and correct ourselves and understand it in real time with Saray and the party in order to really get what its content and message was at the end of the day. So excited to continue that work with you, excited to continue the battles for the good, bad, and the ugly of it all, and we'll see where we go next. Until Friday, my friends, we'll be back then at the same time, 7 p.m. Eastern. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving if you are observing. Whether or not you are, I hope you have plenty for which to be grateful and you at least give yourself a moment to sit in gratitude. Um, and I hope you give yourself a moment to think well and game well and reflect on what it is that gaming can provide to you uh, for which you can be grateful as well. So many things, I would say. So think on that, reflect on that, uh, and we'll be back on the other side of that gratitude on Friday to welcome the weekend with open arms and some good gaming. Till then, my friends, I'm Aaron Saduko. This has been Tales of Praxis. You have a good one. Cheers. <laughs>